Hello, my friends. Welcome back to Tittle Tattle Tarot. It's Georgie. And on the table today, I'm going to be using my horror tarot uh, because the person that um, I'm going to read about, um, not necessarily horror as such, but certainly very, very dark films he used to make, uh, Mr. Alfred Hitchcock. And this is a very specific time in his life. I want to look at, um, he would have been in his 60s. And he made two films with the actress Tippi Hedren. Um, first of all, The Birds. Who remembers The Birds, eh? 1963. Um, horrific. That was a horrific film. The Birds. And then he made Marnie in 1964. And they both uh, featured Tippi Hedren, who was an unknown actress. He'd seen her in a commercial but I think it was like um, a slimming drink. <laughs> and she'd made this commercial and um, he ordered everyone, find the girl, find her. I want that girl. And uh, everyone scuttled about and uh, eventually tracked down Tippi Hedren. And uh, well, he wanted her in these films and signed her into a contract. Um, so this, this reading, it's all about his relationship with Tippi Hedren during the 1964, 1963 period, The Birds and Marnie. Um, he developed some kind of obsession with her. And I think that's probably the kindest way to put it. Um, he always loved blondes in his movies, um, you know, very, very, um, very keen on having a certain look of a woman in his movies. Uh, he was very, very fond of Grace Kelly, that kind of look. And um, Tibby Hedren, she ticked all the right boxes and um, he became absolutely mesmerized by her. And I want to pull a Celtic cross and try and find out what was going on in his mind. Um, he really um, gave her a hard time. With the birds, it started off okay. Um, she was having coaching from Hitchcock and from Hitchcock's wife, Alma. You know, and both these people, they're in their 60s. And I suppose at first she felt pretty um, pretty comfortable with them. She's in her early 30s. They probably seem like more like parental figures to her. Um, but he was um, <laughs> attracted to her in a very unsavoury way. He would just stare at her. Um, and, you know, she felt very uncomfortable, even on the set of the birds. It was starting to, you know, come through then. Um, just that that sort of creepy watching and, um, you know, almost almost stalking her. So I want to find out this all developed and it got much, much worse. Um, but I, I want to find out what was going through his mind. So this is a read, a tarot read using the Celtic cross, all from Hitchcock's point of view. This man in his 60s, what was going on with him? So let's just pull the Celtic cross and we'll see what we come up with. Okay, so there we are, 1963. He's tracked down Tibby Hedron and um, he's managed to find his two of pentacles. Uh, this is your div give and take card. So when he first gets her, it's very much um, the, the two of pentacles, the contract. This is your contract. Sign it if you're um, ready to work with me. Um, and if you're ready to work with me, then, you know, we've got we've got a relationship. Here is the contract taking place. You know, um, I know that you've got a daughter. Remember, she's um, Melanie Griffin's mother, Griffith's mother. And uh, Melanie was a little girl then. She was a single mother, had to look after her daughter. He used that as well. You know, you have a daughter to look after. Um, I can offer you this contract. There you are. This is quite sort of um, devilish hand with the other hand weighing up money, weighing up pros and cons. So he, he offered her a contract that basically she couldn't refuse. And then crossing that, we have temperance in reverse. Um, 
but he'd he'd spotted this woman and she appealed to his base nature i would say um he had a thing for ice cool blondes um that was the woman that sort of um, did it for him and she ticked all the boxes. So, you know, it wasn't like this is the most talented actress. I'm sure she was, but it was um, temperance in reverse. Uh, He didn't come to the decision of Tippi Hedren because um, of her body of work. Um, It wasn't um, a balanced decision to use her. Um, it, it wasn't just purely that um, this is a very good actress. She's been in films, this, that and the other, um, although she was a very good actress. Um, it was in reverse. He was doing it for base needs. He was doing it because um, she excited him in some way. She ticked his boxes as far as being an ice cool blonde and um, did it for him, basically, at 60 odd years old. So and then the top of all this, well, this is all in his head. Um, it's justice that um, she should she should sign this contract and work for him. He's an amazing director, an amazing filmmaker. Um, it's justice that um, he gets her. Um, this is right. This is just. It's it's the best thing all round. Um, She will make money. He can make good films. This is the way it should be. Everything's in its place. Perfect. Everything's working out perfectly. That's in his head. He's got his contract signed and, you know, everything's ticked and done. And that's exactly the way it should be. He gets what he wants. That's justice for him. This man did get what he wanted. Very powerful, powerful man. And at the bottom of everything, we have the Eight of Swords. Now, he tied her up into this contract, literally. Eight of Swords. Um, She's got the blindfold on. Um, I don't think she quite saw what this contract was. Um, She's got a prison around her now. Um, She basically belongs to Hitchcock. Hitchcock. Um, So (sighs) she doesn't have any wriggle room here. She's signed up now for... However many films, however amount of time, he knows, right, it's like, aha, my pretty, I've got you. Um, And and there she is, blindfolded, not realising, not seeing into the future what this could do, not seeing what this man was. And she's imprisoned herself now with this contract, or he's imprisoned her, because this is from his point of view. I've got you now. I've got you. And then, you know, his past, well, what a successful man, you know, um, all these different movies that he'd he'd made, actually um, uh, the toast of, of Hollywood, you know, made a tremendous amount of money. Everybody adored Hitchcock. The Sun, uh, what a um, uh, larger than life figure. Look at this figure here. Um, just everybody um, almost bowing down to this man, the sun on him. Um, you know, uh, what what an amazing director. Everybody sees that side of him. Everybody sees the success, the money success of the films. Um, he's basking in glory, probably so many awards. So that's the, the recent past. This is before The Birds comes out. And Ten of Pentacles, well, after the birds come out and after Marnie, even more success. Look at this Ten of Pentacles. Your Ten of Pentacles, that's your absolute um, pinnacle of um, wealth and acquirement. Um, Ten of Pentacles, he's probably got all the monetary um, security he would ever need. Um, An amazing home, Uh, wealth, security, as I say, you know, it, it is the absolute top the top of um, having what you desire, material world, you've got the lot. So that came after the birds and Marnie. And then we're looking in from the outside, the Knight of Swords. Now, this this is him on set. Um, it got worse and worse. The Knight of Swords is... Um, <sighs> pretty much, you know, going in with your sword and and just, come on, let's sort this out. We're going to do it. It's quite harsh energy at the best of times, even if it's up the right way. It's it's quite sort of cutthroat and we're sorting it out. We're doing it now. Get out of my way. So it's got that 
that energy about it anyway, but you turn it up the wrong way, um, this is will hurt you with words, will hurt you with sorts of contracts as well. This contract started to really pin her in. Um, if she didn't do what he wanted her to do, he's threatening her with all sorts of things now. And this is from the outside looking in. This is very much Hitchcock, and this is the outside looking in. So that's his feelings. And now we've got sort of more the outside here. And so, you know, he's saying to her, you know, if you don't sleep with me, and this is on um, coming into Marnie, you know, he didn't do this on the birds, but he was still very um, unpleasant on the birds. If you don't, if you don't sleep with me, um, you won't have a contract. I'll cancel your contract. You'll never work again. Um, you know, this is the Knight of Swords, that total attack, attack. And um, what people saw, the magician, I mean, all people really saw about this man was this fabulous magician, this man who created and manifested these amazing films, basically, um, out of nothing. I mean, at, at that time in the 60s, you know, they, they didn't have all the effects. They didn't have um, all of the uh, pyrotechnics that we have now. But he managed to create such magic with the way he shot films, these very, very long scene shots that nobody had ever done before. And it was the magician and people looking in. That's all they saw. They saw that this man created the most wonderful images. They didn't see this at the bottom of it. All of his um, base ways and his cruelness that that was not seen. That was not talked about. So they didn't know about what was going on behind the scenes. They just saw this wonderful creator. Look at this thing that this magician, Greater Arcana, has created. And we have, I think next that came out was the tower. This is the universe. And the universe is saying, you can't treat people like that. You will you will break people. And he did break her. Um, he, I say he broke her. Yeah, she's a very strong woman, a very strong woman. I think it it, it didn't break her, but it's he almost destroyed her. I'm gonna gonna put it like that. He almost destroyed her. Um, she walked away from her contract. Um, this had all started in the birds, you know, and um, she peed him off in some way. And rather than using mechanical birds, he'd used um, real birds. And real birds were put in this room and real birds attacked her, not mechanical birds. So, you know, all of this is sort of building up with the birds attacking her, with, um, you know, him saying to her on Marnie, um, getting more and more obsessed about her. If you don't sleep with me, um, I'm going to cancel your contract. And the, the universe is saying you cannot treat someone like that. Uh, people see you as the magician, as this wonderful creator. But the universe knew what he was heading for. The universe knew that this this was not, not the way to approach things. And then at the top of things, we have the King of Swords. So the King of Swords, the right way up, um, very honest, truthful, very, um, uh, if the King of Swords tells you something, then you know to believe it. Um, if the King of Swords had a contract for you, you'd know that it would be right and loyal and, and it would be just. The King of Swords in reverse is um, untrustworthy, a vile person, not to be trusted. And that, that was the outcome of it. She knew, she knew that she couldn't trust him at all and she walked away from it. So he lost, he lost this wonderful actress. Um, she just, I think that, at the end of the filming, the tower is also the body. I think she was broken. Um, she's a very, very strong woman. And, and she came out of this, you know, with her dignity and she came out of it with um, her mental health intact. But I think that she was, for a while, the tower, the body. I think, you know, her body was broken after these two films. Um, she needed time away and she knew what um, a king of swords in reverse this man was. Um, you know, the, the contract was um, tying her up in knots. 
um, he was treating her basically as a chattel. Um, yeah, the girl, that's all he saw her as. So I want to get right to the heart of the matter, right to the heart of the matter with Hitchcock. What was it with him? Will the cards let me know? What was it with this man? Judgment. Okay. And we have on the other side... The Hierophant, yeah, okay. Let's just move those across so we can look at these cards here. Judgment and the Hierophant in reverse. So, I don't, Hitchcock, um, he lived to be about 80. So, you know, he lived for another 20 years after um, the birds and after um, Marnie. So, you know, he had another, another good 20 years after that. Um, but he started to be judged. Um, things started to come out about him. And, it, you know, it took a long time. But, you know, this tarnishes your image. This tarnishes your legacy. And um, now looking back, we still see that he made wonderful films. Nobody can deny that. But also you see through this judgment card, the cruelty of the man. Um, he was a sadist. Um, he was um, sexually, um, I don't know whether you say inadequate or obsessed or whatever with these ice cool blondes, um, always looking at these women who would never even look twice at him and trying to sort of, um, in a way, impose himself on people, uh, these beautiful women. Um, judgment, yes. Um, and now we look back on Hitchcock's films and, and the man has stained his own legacy. Um, Archangel Gabriel, you know, he blew his trumpet and um, said, you know, this will always follow you now. In death, you know, we people will look at your films and they will think they are amazing for what they were, but they know, they know what you were like. And the Hierophant in reverse. And again, this is the card of the Hierophant the right way up. It's... Um, it's right and it's just, it's doing things the correct way. It's if you had a contract, if you had um, anything to do with anything, um, not necessarily legal, um, but it's morals. It's your moral code, how you live your life. And if you have the Hierophant the right way up in your life, you know that you have a strong moral code and you know right from wrong and, and um, you know, you live your life in a good way. Well, he didn't. His Hierophant was the wrong way round. He was upside down. Um, he lived according to his own rules. Um, and, you know, that's never good, is it? It's never good at all. So, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, an unpleasant man, an unpleasant man. Um, I don't know what his wife thought of him. That might be an interesting read, actually. Alfred Hitchcock's wife, Alma, how she coped with this man who was, um, you know, sexually obsessed with these beautiful women. How did she cope with it? She's not on the table here. Um, nothing has come up for her energy. It's all him and the external forces. Um yeah, he, he was a very unwelcome, um, obsessed man. And I think for a while in um, her life, in Tippi Hedren's life, he caused her a total tower moment and the universe saw that. But the universe ultimately got its revenge in a way um, because he's judged now on, you know, his the way he conducted himself because it wasn't good. So, my dears, that is what I make of Alfred Hitchcock. He was an amazing film director. Nothing can take that away. Nothing can um, take away some of those wonderful films. But what went on behind the scenes, tying these poor women into these contracts, um, being vile, being the king of swords. Um, yeah, he, he led them a hell of a dance. So um, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed that one. And I'll be back again with something different very soon. Bye-bye.